Such a great. We uh, came here almost 20 years ago, met Levin, uh, saw Check. Turkey for the first time, we couldn't do it, and they are excellent. The great thing about traveling with two trips is whatever trip you choose, there's always something very special and unique that you won't find on any other tour. They are great, they are very diligent in their work, they are great people, and they are uh, just great friends. Affection involved in their work, and furthermore, they do their work with great passion. That comes very nicely in every tour they achieve, and every tour, thanks God, comes to be a great success. When you think Turkey, there's only one agency to think about, Tutku. They do the best tours here in the country, and I'd highly recommend them. Use Tutku many times, and they do a great job of, with your group to let them see the wonderful sights that Turkey has to offer. I have been traveling with Tutku tours for eight years now, uh, and I've used them for my groups, both to Turkey and Israel and Jordan, and it has been a seamless, perfect experience every time. I will never use anybody else. Every year in late May, we organize this event for Christian groups in the ancient city of Ephesus. The Ephesus meeting is organized by Levent Oral, and, who is the president and owner of Tutku Tours. He has been offering these biblical tours since 1992. We trust that there are many more participants in each of the upcoming annual Ephesus meetings, and with your support and encouragement and participation, Tutku Tours will passionately continue to sponsor this event every year. Tutku is a Turkish word that means passion, and the staff at Tutku Tours is passionately devoted to delivering outstanding biblical tours in Turkey, Israel, Greece, and Italy. So I would like to briefly introduce the groups here tonight. Um, will you please stand when I call your name? We have Ridley College from Australia. <laughs> we have Peninsula Bible College from Cupertino, Cupertino, California, led by Pastor Bernard Bell and his guide Majid. <laughs> We have Fresno Pacific University from California, led by Dr. Gray Pan, and their guide is James. Uh, we have the Biblical Archaeology Society group from different cities all over the U.S., led by Dr. Mark Wilson, and their tour guide is Malcolm. We have Pastor Lauren Bostwick from Central Presbyterian Church in Eugene, Oregon. Uh, we have Dr. Aaron Gale and his wife from West Virginia University. <laughs> Dr. Douglas Jacoby from the Biblical Study Tours. <laughs> Dr. Dana Harris with Trinity Evangelical Divinity School in Illinois. <laughs> Dr. David Malzberger from Wayland Baptist University in Texas. Jason Odin and Heather Ellison from Trinity Episcopal Church in Ohio. Sorry. It was a joke. Uh, Dr. Jeff and Bernie Sumaima from Calvin Theological Seminary. Jason Myers from Greensboro College, North Carolina. Steve Booth and his son Robbie from Canadian Southern Baptist Seminary and College in Calgary, Canada. And Dr. Mark Fairchild from Huntington University, Indiana. Bob, Bob Fukumoto from Reasonable Faith in Denver. We also have American and other friends joining us from Izmir tonight. Uh, tonight, during tonight's special event, we're privileged to have the presence of Mike Martin and friends. Um, who are from the International Oasis Church in Saljuk. Mike has generously given his time in choosing and leading us in the songs we'll sing here tonight. 
So once again, on behalf of Tuku Tours, I would like to extend a warm welcome to you and hope you will all be delighted and inspired during this meeting in Ephesus. Now our good friend, Sarah Gilmans from Biblical Archaeology Society would like to say a few words. Eight years ago when I was hired, I was hired as an editor and he said, call this man. I met him in Turkey last year. He can help you. Uh, and that is how the Biblical Archaeology Society's relationship with Tutkutors was born. And in these last eight years, um, we have been partners and friends in creating programs that I am very proud of, that our organization is very proud of, and um, it's been a seamless experience and, and such a great period of growth for us. Uh, and we're always looking for new things to do and uh, new sites to explore, and there are endless numbers of those sites uh, here in just Turkey. Um, so thank you, Levent, for, for having us. And for those of you who are just concluding your trips, um, I hope that you have made memories of a lifetime. And for those of you who are just beginning, myself and our, our vast participants, um, it's going to be a great two weeks. Good evening, friends. There is a handout. My students are always saying, give me the PowerPoints. And I like to say a text without a context is just a pretext for whatever you want it to mean. We need to study their original context. And tonight, we're going to study the social context that has to do with money. So point number one, there were no free market economies for no free market capitalism in the first century AD. Point number two, there were no democracies in first century AD. Point number three, about 40 to 50 percent of the labor force during the Roman Empire was literally slave labor. Great to be here again, especially see you. I want to start with a mention of a well-known musician from Mississippi. Who do you love? Now, despite his grammatical infelicity, and whom do you love just does not sound right to our ear now. What was making the same point as Jesus in Revelation 2:4 when he stated, Tain agapain su tain protein afekes. You have left your first love. However, Boxall suggests that it's probably a false dichotomy to distinguish between the love of God and the love for others. While this observation is true, its lack of specificity is unhelpful in describing the spiritual situation of the Ephesians. And may this discussion tonight stir you to consider whether there might be a second love who has replaced the first, our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you and good evening. Wonderful to be here once again, especially under the lights and to see this terrific city in a different way. Aquila and Priscilla, who had uh, been followers of Paul, took him aside and explained to them, to him, more accurately about Jesus. And he was just not aware of what was going on. Skipping down then to the beginning verses in Acts chapter 19, verse 1, we read this. So Trophimus had traveled with Paul. Tuchicus, who is Tuchicus? Tuchicus is described in uh, Acts chapter 20, verse 4, as a traveling companion with Paul. In the Western text of Acts, uh, who do not have pastors who have been trained in seminaries, and they're just trying to grapple and cobble together an understanding of what this newfound Christian faith is all about. And fortunately, Paul 
had uh, excellent strategies to deal with that, not only by establishing schools, but also by training disciples on the road. exciting to be here uh, in Epsis tonight and to have this meeting and many thank you to Tutku Tours for uh, this invitation. We have the idea of holy handkerchiefs and aprons uh, in this episode only to be followed by the occasion where one of the sons of Sceva finds out that you shouldn't mess with an evil spirit who's been working out. Paul communicates in ways that would have been familiar to his audience. This becomes all the more clear when we begin to understand the importance of moral development in the ancient world. We know of several moral philosophers from Paul's day, just to name a few, like Epictetus, Plutarch, and Seneca, who aim to educate their adherents to their philosophical way of life. Great God and loving Father, we thank you for knowledge, knowledge of you and of what you have done for us through your Son, Jesus Christ. We gather together this evening in a library, in a place which collected knowledge. And for that to happen, we pray that your spirit would work with your word and with all the things that we're learning so that we may better know the love of Christ. And we pray that that love will change us, that the Lord love will transform us, and that we in turn will demonstrate that love of Jesus to others. And through all of this, we pray, O oh God, that you may be glorified and that your kingdom may increase until the great and glorious day of Jesus' return. In his name we pray. Amen. 